seven years old, and we had all sorts of animals, iguanas, fish, turtles, and uh, one of the main ones we had um, was actually uh, a anaconda. From the anaconda. Eyes keep one. And it was one. Uh, and move the chair. I don't know what happened. I had to, I had to click on it again. So there may have been a feed. We'll go back. I think they may have missed the intro talking that we were doing, but I know yeah, I did it with the questions. So I was really distracting to me. <laughs> the narcissism thing, kind of. Just look at the camera. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> so, but yeah, uh, we, we had that snake, you know, we, we had tortoises, you know, um, and I grew up in it. And then we moved out to the country. I had goats and, you know, we had livestock, different things like that. And then I moved into a neighborhood, you know, went to school, you know, and I always had that interest. Um, my brother's interest always went more Please. towards the stuff and dinosaurs. Um, you know, my nephew's last name is Soar. And so, so we both always grew up with that passion and I didn't get back into it um, until I was in college. Uh, there was a Kenyan sand boa somebody had that they couldn't take care of anymore and they couldn't get it to eat. So I took it on and, uh, and, and I still have it. And yes. I oh, you're good, man. I'm, I'm talking a little bit. Sorry. But, uh, but yeah, I started a couple ball pythons, you know, and I started keeping captive, and then I went out more, you know, and I, I really fell in love with herping and just going out and finding random animals and, uh, and of course, snakes and reptiles. And then it kept growing. Um, and then I actually, fun fact, I got wrongfully arrested. I was actually looking at joining the Air Force, and... I got wrongfully arrested my senior year in college and oh, I didn't want to join as enlisted because I had spent so much time in college. I wanted to be an officer and you're eligible. Right. If you're within a year of graduating, you just have to go in front of the board. I did awesome on the AFOQT. You know, I, I did like everything uh, awesome, but right before I went into the board is when this whole incident happened. And by the time the char DA dropped the charges, I was almost ready to graduate, so I was a firearm specialist at the time, but I had lost that job, and the way my boss was about it, you know, I was just like, I'm, I'm tired of working for other people, I'm tired of getting screwed up, you know, it's like, I know I'm a hard worker, and I know, and um, I helped, you know, I, I was dating Ali at the time, and she wanted to start a pet business, so we found a little small joint in the shopping center was going to open up a storefront well that idea didn't last very long but i had this lease so i was like well this is my breeding facility for now and i actually lived in that shopping center <laughs> oh wow and you know um but i mean her and i we split ways so rather than sticking with catalyst critters i started up max's morphs um we, we have a shop here in town called pam's pets and I think that's just, you got to go with the alliterations around Avalanche for some reason. Oh, but I, man, that's yeah, funny. I, I started this, you know, I've, you know, I've produced snakes for about three years now. And then, you know, of course, I've got my other lizards, you know, I've got my frill dragon, my skink, you know, ducky. Right. And where video came into it, um, you know, video kind of fell into it when my started starting in middle school my friend mitchell he really liked doing youtube videos and we, we did a little bit of that um and then Aaliyah, she had some of her videos and then when she started uh going up for video show of the year i started looking into other youtubers and i fell in love with it. i was like oh man these people are cool you know these personalities and I was recording on my phone at the start, you know, I, I right. had nothing and, you know, eventually I saved up, went to a pawn shop and got a camera and uh, it's a Nikon. I'm bus busy switching to Canon now because, but, uh, but yeah, I just started with nothing. I was like, I'll be a talking head. Insert sponsorship here. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It was a joke. Oh, yeah. I was like, I'm going away from Nikon. I'm going to Canon. Insert sponsorship here. 
so that's on like that's an unbiased thing um and if you watch tiki's geckos they also use um i could tell they use nikon because they have um some of the same problems i do and that's not knocking their videos but if you're sitting there um if here's one of my, my cameras but if you're sitting here filming yourself and you're on full-time autofocus it hunts too much so i'll take you out of focus before it brings you back into focus right if you're one if you're like me and a pretty active talker i mean the, it just doesn't stay in focus or if you're moving in on something it'll take it out of focus so um so that's why i'm switching to canon they actually have dual pixel autofocus but yeah, I, I i love my canon bro yeah. i absolutely love my canon problem with it is that this has 12 megapixels and it has, I think, like, sensor or whatever the scale is. So, um, so to get that, basically, the equivalent is an ADD, and that's like a thousand dollars, you know. So, to get the same quality as Nikon has, you have to spend a lot more. But, you know, that focus system is. You know, just something I need. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Yeah. All right. So, what you said with Catalia, that's kind of what started the breeding. But what really started the snake breeding for you? Um. So, I had a friend, Hannah. She actually had, I think, two. I think I started with two black pythons. And it, they were both normals. And she said, hey, you can have. Okay, great. And then I got which is yellow belly anchee. I had a choice between yellow belly or yellow belly anchee. And I just, I was, it was awesome at the time, so I went with yellow belly anchee. And, uh, and so I, I was like, oh, hey, I can say Well, I started going on World of All Pythons, and I was like, well, how do I know about allelic traits? But, Favorite genes to work with, so you can do, you know, rather than just ivories, you know, you, you know, your highways, your. I think this looks really good. So, as far as that breeding goes, you know, I fell in love with a lot of the morphs because I was learning about it. It was interesting. This like bottomless well of things you can do. In the reptile community, they'll go I'll talk about all this, but ball python just—it's always something new. And I was like, "Hey, well, hey, I, um, I'm always down to uh, uh, learn loca uh, locales with you know local uh, uh, um, local snakes. Uh, I forget the word for that right now." Oh, she has some here. Indigenous, so yeah, indigenous, and so I was like, oh, well, you know, but mm -hmm. about the nomenclature, which is another bottomless well. I jumped in on all that. Okay. Um, I don't know if you're hearing me clear. I we're able to follow what you're saying, but you seem to be breaking up just a little bit on the audio end. Hi, Max. Okay. How's Cap? How you doing? It's been what, seven years? Yeah, not that long. Yeah, you know. Yeah. No big. <laughs> um, Jesus. Sorry, my sister called me. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. So. Um, oh. All right. So hopefully the audio resolves itself. I'm not sure why it did that. But it's kind of weird. Better now? Um, yeah, we're good. <laughs> you know, hold it right next to the router. All right, so we're breeding. I know we're breeding ball pythons. Is there anything else you're breeding at this time? Um, So I bought a lot of ball pythons because the you know, idea of one male, you know, going with a couple females you know that's more cost efficient but then i realized that my love for reptiles is too diverse to stick to that 
So I've got red tail boas, I've got <laughs> carpet pythons, I've got hog nose, bear rat snakes. Um, I got some venomous stuff. Um, and See, that jumps into one of the questions I was going to ask later. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's awesome. And then gargoyle that's... got crested geckos. I think that's all. Frill dragons. <laughs> A little bit of everything. Yeah, I, I mean, some right now it's like I would love to breed, but it's just like I just have them because I love them, and it's, right. it's like combat. My frill dragon, it's com that's combat with a K, by the way. He just always an attitude, and just always. Is Sorry. Technical Pong. difficulties in the Hicks household, guys. Hold on. I've got a sister that won't stop calling me. Let me message her on Facebook. I'm here. Right. What's up, Riley? So, I will let you... Hi. All good, though. Yeah. Um, Can you open this? So, we're not breeding everything. We're breeding just ball pythons right now? Uh... All pythons, uh, carpet pythons, boas, rat snakes. Okay. And you're doing some of the sands too, aren't you? Or did you oh, go yeah, away yeah, from yeah. the sands? I actually, they were, uh, I was surprised by that. The litter that was had, because it turns out both my male and the female. I my finger, so I tried to lick it off its sweet So, I, like, I had two as babies, and I was happy with it. <laughs> it sold really well at this past lockdown, and I only have three left. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not laughing at you. Oh, no, that's fine. I Please eat babies. that. Please eat that. I want to see this. <laughs> I already, I my wife my just finger. dropped the baby food on her food, and I, I just had to see the reaction. Shoot. I'm over here eating spice cake and drinking a... Uh, I got Taco Bell sitting over here waiting What's for you. Spicy what? Spice cake and drinking Shiner Bar. Oh. Yeah, I got a little cake right here. That sounds good. Nice. Now, this mm -hmm. is my. That's your. That's the one from Arlington, right? That we were talking about. So, um, the people who produce CLA exotics, um, they priced it at two thousand. Um, and it, it's, so this one's a pastel yellow belly Hydra and Hydra is going to be that silver on the side. It has really nice standing. And then, uh, it has a Z pattern on the neck. Really can't tell. But, um, uh, but yeah, this is Ben Rennick's legacy and something he proved. Up. So only 20 people in the world have it. I just happen to be one of them. Yeah, that's that's an amazing addition into the collection. I, I, I remember the night you got it, and I think the next day we spent what well, probably half an hour talking about just that snake. Oh yeah, I mean, it be cold. I don't know that much about it, and I won it at the auction. I knew that like this is you know gene that's not. You know, no, nobody really looked into it that much. So, Sorry. you know, I, I looked into it more and more. And I think the most dominant <laughs> come out of it is the <laughs> banana alpha, which is that one. It is. I saw that. That was so amazing. The worst part about it was that it was on the wrist. So, I don't know where they put the meat. I know. I know. Right. So, here comes the hard. Well, I say hard questions. It's really not hard. Um, where do you see the industry? Do you see the industry going up or going down at this time? And why do you think that? Um, hmm, that is a lot of let, let me let me take ten on that <laughs> because you know. I think the industry is growing. It definitely is growing, and you know, well. There's always different markets. So, you know, snakes aren't Air Jordans anymore. Mm -hmm. 
you know, there's something that's a little, you know, Air Jordans were nice because they were exclusive. So, you know, all, you're talking to Sean here in the next few weeks. And when I talked to him, he was like, hey, man, this morph used to be $15,000. used to be pay to play. And in the back of my mind, I was like, well, I wouldn't have played because, no, that's too much. But I think there's always going to be a place for ball python. You know, you're always going to have those, uh, if you're in Dallas, those great fun kids. Um, or if you're playing those wild, you know, just those those kids with a little bit of extra spending money from their parents. But I, I think there's always going to be that flexibility. So it's leveling out. And I think it's growing as a whole. And the reason I think that is because, because of the internet, you great forms of different things such as YouTube and different things like that. But that goes on to the whole snake thing, you know, when everyone's like, snake, look at this snake, you know, boop, this way back when it's like, oh man, snakes are tough. You know, it's like, this is a freaking you know, viper and, you know, and then the Steve Irwin era, now it's all poop this new cute stuff, which I love and hate. I love the fact that it puts snakes in a new, in a new perspective, but it's just like, stop baby talking. So I think it's more mainstream, which can be a double-edged sword because there's people who can screw up and, you know, make it all look bad. And, right. No, oh. oh, I agree, and I I kind of like. We're gonna go into like your relocation and things like that in a second, but I I like the way you said that. Where like you had the Steve Irwin era, where he wasn't afraid to go towards something venomous or whatever it was. If he won, if he was around that reptile, he was gonna get up close, personal. And really teach you about that animal, which I love. I think that's what really created the reptile uh, niche that we have here on YouTube right now is what Steve Irwin did with Animal Planet. And God bless him and his soul and his family. Like This is years now down the road, but he, he really opened the door for us to be able to do what we're doing now um, without any doubt in my mind, I believe that wholeheartedly. Um, I think it's amazing that you work with venomous or hots or whatever you want to call it. Oh, yeah, uh, for sure. What hots do you keep right now? So, um, currently, uh, I, I don't keep them on location, you know, just for, uh, you know, kind of household people running around, having friends over. And, but, uh, speckled <laughs> Uh, Ornatus, uh, black tail, uh, of course, the wet neck back. And then we just got a moon viper Friday. Mm -hmm. A weird kind of somebody <laughs> dropping it off and uh, bring it to their mom. They were moving in with their mom. And yeah, just. And said, "Yeah, we have a baboon viper." What? Like, what? A, a baboon. <laughs> Send us a picture, and sure enough, one of the prettiest ones I've ever seen. So it's um, that's crazy. Like, there's um, the the guy I work with. You know, we uh, good job. He has his collection. Uh, you know, cobras, um, the snouted cobra. Time for another wheel. Specs, uh, I'm trying to think of other rattlesnake species. An eastern, so yeah, good, and good number of. Uh, January, we are going to the, and we're just gonna look at a bunch of different snakes and that's awesome. Uh, you know, add to the collection and and uh, get some more of a venomous collection you know, to show people and. Uh, I've been really reserved on talking about venomous stuff other than relocation, you know, as far as capital care, plus YouTube, you know, if you, you know, any Facebook group, you know that there's back and forth with the care of a ball python. Right. 
many, many years. And it's like, there's still so much debate and back and forth in the venomous community over every species. And so when I say, hey, here's how I get something, I'm not a local who keeps my leopard gecko on calcistan sand with, you know, a rock. You know, I'm not trying to be that guy of the venom. So I'm really yeah, but I mean, you you okay. kind of live in the area where if you're keeping a Western diamondback, all you got to do is look outside. Or yeah. if you're even, I think, with the part of Texas that you're in, if you can, I think you get timber rattlesnakes still this far south, don't you? Um, or am I off? It's like right at the borderline of timber. So um, I, north of Dallas. I think is where the range ends. Um, pretty pretty far north of Dallas, I I think. Yeah. Okay. But um, but yeah, they're, they're east, and I mean, I mean, Western Diamondbacks. So, you know, but a species like speckled rattlesnakes, you know, if you look at you know, speck, they they like it a lot hotter, and you know their gradient. You know, I, I have kind of rocks stacked up to where it can get up there to that nice bass spot. And then they're they're really weird for eating. You know, my white speck, uh, it won't eat a frozen thawed. You know, it, it won't eat rats. It has to have that life. Well, it, it won't eat live, but it'll eat frozen thawed mice the second day. So how I knew that was like... Hmm. I, uh, like go by check when I went out of town, dropped it in, and I was like, "Hey, it should eat." It. Well, it didn't eat it, and then you know, I mean, I was like, "Okay, well, don't touch it." Um, and you know, when I get back, I'll I'll check, it. and it ate it the second day, and it's something. And I've talked to other venomous keepers; it's something about the rotting smell. You know, they'll eat it the second day, so they're a lot more particular as far as food goes, and. Oh, okay. A lot of hots, you know, ones that are naturally lizard eaters, like tiger rattlesnakes, switching them to rodents. You know, there, there's a lot of hurdles and challenges. And, you know, I, I've been asked to breed gerbils and hamsters. And just because some yeah. snakes, they won't look twice at a rat or a mouse or even an African softbird, but they'll chase down a rodent or a gerbil. There's something about the smell, you know. They're, so they're a lot more particular. They're more expensive to keep. And so, um, yeah, it's they're they're interesting. So it's another hurdle and a hole I'm gonna go down. No pun intended. <laughs> so going off of that, um, obviously we talked about hots. We've been talking about hots for a while now. People are actually starting to put their views on hots on the chat, which is awesome. You guys keep throwing that. If I'm missing anything, I apologize. Throw it back out there. I will try to catch it. Um, what I want to talk about now, Max, is the relocation jobs you do. And I don't know if I lost you or not because you kind of went blank. You still there, buddy? I think we may have lost Max, guys. Oh, Lord, his phone died. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to work it out while he plugs his phone in and we get this figured out, guys. Uh, <laughs> so I know there's some stuff about HOTS. Yes, a lot of people do uh, really jump towards HOTS. I know a lot of people that do have HOTS themselves. I know myself, uh, I want to eventually keep HOTS. My passion for reptiles honestly started with diamondback rattlesnakes, the Western diamondback rattlesnakes, because that's what I grew up with. I've seen everything from babies following their mom, which is an odd behavior to see if you think about a snake, but a mom actually protecting its kids after hatching, and they stay in such a close range so that they grow up. That it's amazing. I, I just, I've always loved rattlesnakes. Rattlesnakes are what drew me into reptiles in the first place. And uh, we're going to have to call Max back, but we're going to get this going, guys. Once he says he's ready to go, we'll, uh, 
go ahead and add him back in and get things going over here. Um, but what are your guys' thoughts on it? What do you what do you think about keeping hots or are hots even anything that you have a passion for? Thank you for sharing. Mm. I think we didn't need to share. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You share. That's nice of you to share. That's good. I think you're very sweet to share. And now I have to eat. I know with me. Very sweet. Um, you're a very sweet boy. Hi, Nick. But I need to find someone close to me that is working with them to mentor me. There's no way I do it on my own. Oh, absolutely, Adam. Like I, I've been around rattlesnakes my whole life. Like they, they literally are underneath my doorstep all the time when I was growing up, and I'd have to move them away for the family members. But I don't think, I don't think myself, I'd keep one. Uh -oh. just because I don't have the handling skills that I need and then also because of the kids right now. So I definitely want to get better to uh -oh. with handling and taking care of everyone yeah, kid. so that we can uh, yeah, and, and, get the back. Are you back, Max? Uh, but so that we can handle them right and so that I don't have to worry about the kids. Like, obviously, once I have hots the kids are going to be kept away from that area they're going to know hey these snakes you have to absolutely leave sure. alone but i do want them you're scratching my leg with your mom mom what's my mom doing you do not act to my mom do you that's a very valid point riley uh, honestly, if you're keeping hots, you got you got to understand there's a possibility that you are gonna uh, you're gonna have that chance of getting bit. Like, just because you're keeping them doesn't mean that you're not gonna get bit. You do need to either know someone that can supply the anti venom or keep anti venom on hand. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I know you came from. From a background, Riley, so I understand how taking it from the zoo might be frowned upon on your part. Um, I do love them, though. Like, I, I would love to have pots on my own. At this time, it's just not feasible. So, Max, we're getting back to it. Relocation right. efforts. For sure this time. So. <laughs> But yeah, no, I, uh, so I kind of got the tail of what you were saying. Down in Houston, Spencer Green, he's one of the top uh, toxic toxic in the nation. And he just treated somebody's monocled cobra bite. He's somebody, if I ever got bit, uh, you know, by, by some other rattlesnake. What do I need to do? Uh, kind of my benefit, my learning curve is one of my mentors, you know, he's been you know, times and so I know what to expect different calls. But other than that, you know, if I ever got bit by, you know, I'm call him, say, hey. And, that, and that's what that guy does. So it's like, yeah, it, def, protocols are awesome. No. The protocols are there for a reason, especially when you're handling hots, because there's just there's too many possibilities of something going wrong. But it doesn't change my love for them at all. Like like I said, I don't know if you heard while I was putting excuse me putting it out, but Diamondback or Western Diamondbacks are actually what intrigued me and got me started in the reptile love like my passion for reptiles and then it went into boa constrictors because that was the first thing i owned like like well i'm not gonna keep rattlesnakes especially at 14 years old it was, it was hard enough get convincing my mom to let me keep a red tail boa but 
you know, yeah. especially when my whole family was like, oh, it's a snake, kill it, you know, so the fact that I was even able to keep a red-tailed boa at a childhood age with my family around was amazing in a sense of its own, but, um, We'll see how I convince parents, anyone who's ever been beside me when I've been vending a show. Reptiles. So I'll never have money for drugs. That that seems to kind of come to some people. So what you do for work now is you, uh, well, besides breeding ball pythons, and carpets and stuff. You relocate venomous and other animals that kind of take over homes, right? So, yeah, so what happens there is, uh, you know, uh, a lot of things happen on a lot of ranches, residential homes, and it's us or the shovel. And so when people find these, you know, that they don't want to they don't come in their house anymore, and so you know, they either call us or you know, Billy with a shotgun down the street. And so, you know, we go and we relocate them to give them a second chance. Right. That's awesome, man. Like, I, I love that. I think that's one of the things that drew me to your channel. Like, after we talked, because I didn't know you at all. And that, like, that, those are the videos that just like keep me in because when I go in there, I, I remember like, hey, this is this is what I used to see at my house, you know, like I walk outside and there's six rattlesnakes just sitting along the side of my house because they're trying to stay warm or this is where they feel comfortable right now because we took over their land and it is what it is. Like you're not gonna You definitely move to site. Exactly. Like you're you're if you live in the country at all, you're not going to get rid of the wildlife there, especially the rattlesnakes. They're going to come out of the ground. Exactly. Be there. So you get those bastards over in the water and all we're doing is population control. You're not. You can't play God there. You know, you're looking at a predator prey relationship. You get a spike in prey. So for those who don't know as much about rattlesnakes, you know, uh, average litter size is going to be a dozen, about a dozen snakes, but they have a really high mortality rate. And one, two, if that makes childhood, but a lot of that's because they can't find food. So they either eat late in the year, and since they're ectothermic, they can't digest their food, and they either regurgitate or it rots inside of them, or they don't have the fat reserves to survive the winter. Right. When you get a spike in prey population, it's it's a lot easier for some babies to find food. And you get more that survive. So what does happen is, you know, three tooth Willy, Willy Joe Bob, they go out, people, then they, or according to Texas Parks and Wildlife, average amount of gasoline per hole is about a quarter cup that they use per hole. And so they pump this gas in there, but no way all of the snakes. You have tons of uh, rodent mittens that create air. Get away uh, from those, but the communal part of the den is uninhabitable. And so they'll never get in. And where does that send them? Right under the top. And we get calls, you know, from Ross goes to the water. We've never had problems with these animals. Until they turn around, yeah. They get to uh, so they're they're really making the problem worse. No, because he's there in September. Absolutely. And I think it's going to be um, that, that's something that I'll, not a lot of videos or people talk about is the dislocation of these snakes into residential areas. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was just My princess saying. had to give her input too. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was. Like, yeah. Just don't let her become a woo girl. Hey, hey. <laughs> nah, bro. She she she's got older than I do. Like, this girl's gonna be able to rock some people's socks off if she learns how to sing. She's a growler. There we go. There's my growl. Did they hear it? 
Do you want to oh. put her over there and see if you can get oh. her? Like, Jeez. So, you've been on YouTube a couple of years now, right? Yes. And you've been, you have been sponsored, sort of, right? Or am I wrong? Uh, yeah. uh, so, guys sponsored. And so, here, here's the difference between that baby sponsors me. Um, <laughs> She's what? So, you said that baby uh, sponsors I, me. <laughs> I tell people all the time, you know, I'm a YouTuber. I'm not an influencer. If somebody gives me money, that doesn't change. Or if, you know, they give me credit towards something, that doesn't change my opinion. So, you know, I, I think people lose credit the moment they become an influencer. So when people approach me and they talk to me, you know, they want honest respect. So Progressive uh, Plastics, they gave me that rack to build and review. They wanted me to look at it from the bottom up. And, I mean, talking with him, you know, like, I would, you know, all my grievances, you know, like, oh, I'd rather have Phillips head than a Scarbit head. And, you know, he, like, he addressed why he did the thing, you know, and, like, you know, he, he actually does use Phillips heads for the ones he shipped out. But the ones he built yeah, himself, he oh, 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 us to make it more readily available. And then after about a year I approached JG, it's like, dude, like, I've got the platform and I'll talk about this. And so, so I, and then of course, Chris I, um, my biggest video is re relocating 60 from under one den. And you know, I talk about crew time. Like, hey, if we break the record, can we go get crew time? And, and that's a high restaurant here in town, and I tell everyone, you've got to go with her. One of my girlfriends and I, first date was, it's the best. But yeah, no, so th those are some of the people who sponsored me. I've had some other sponsors and, you know, little spotlights where I feature uh, spa pet grooming. But I don't put it, I, I'll turn people down if I don't put in them. So anyway, long answer to short question, yeah, I've been sponsored. <laughs> And one of the things I love is that you you really haven't been changed by that. Like a lot of people, they'll throw on sponsors, and it's not it's not just in our industry; it's in every industry because they're trying to really just make that extra dough every video. And uh, but what I love about you is that you just stay true to you. Yeah, that's what I love about Max's view is. Like we were, you were saying before we jumped on here, it's your view, and it's always going to be your view and how yeah. you feel about things. And I mean, is the way it should be. Yeah. So people can disagree all day long. You know, I'm just, and I'm always subject to change. You know, I'm not a hundred percent. You know, I'm not an end all be all. I'm not a complete psychologist. But something really cool. Like, I want to share that. Poor girlfriend. She hears the same joke from me thirty thousand times because I just want everyone to hear this joke because it made me happy. So if something made me happy, tell people about it. So I, you know, I didn't really have the confidence to start YouTube, but I think the lack of caring kind of where my esteem comes from or whatever. You know, like I care to not care because I care about these other things more, if that makes sense. Yeah. I hear you, man. I'm only- I love it. I love it. <laughs> all right, so we got through all the hard questions because my only last question was hots. Do you keep them and your thoughts on keeping them? But we already hit that, so- <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. We so went I through my list. Um, so we're gonna have a real quick lightning round and then I'm going to say happy holidays to everyone or Merry Christmas because I give a shit about being politically correct. <laughs> and we're going to.
going to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and get out of here. But I'm going to go ahead and jump through a lightning round real quick. Five questions. Uh, these are going to come off the top of my head because I didn't get them written down. So I hope you enjoy. Okay. Um, favorite holiday? Ooh, uh, favorite holiday. I feel like I have one. I'm going to say Halloween just because I feel like people celebrate that equally whether they're in poverty or rich, you know, if that's something you can just put your effort is what matters. So. Not bad. Not bad. Um, let's see. Coffee or tea. Ooh, my mom was British. So I always grew up having Earl Grey and English breakfast, but I'm a coffee drinker all the way. You know, I've, I've been, it, uh, up until last year when Starbucks changed the re rewards program, I, I've been a rewards member for about 10 years, but I canceled that after they changed their rewards. But, <laughs> but yeah, I love coffee. Favorite reptile you've worked with and one that you want to work with? Favorite reptile I've worked with, I really love... Let's see. I, I really love hognose, and I know that's kind of a basic answer, um, but their tongues always flick so fast. So anytime I have a hognose and I'm showing somebody new, I always say the scientific name for the snake tongue is a blah, 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 blah. And so <laughs> I always get to make that stupid joke. So I, I love working with hognose. I think they have great personality. One I want to work with, oh, there's, there's a lot. Um, I've I've wanted a tegu for a while, a black and white tegu. And every time I go to a show, I'm like, I need a lizard dog in my life. So, um, but yeah, that's one I want to. <laughs> I'm sure it'll happen sooner or later, man. What is that? Three? Yeah. I oh. I'm going to put myself through the ringer right now because. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, no. I was going to say uh, a bonus one I want to work with is anybody who knows about the banded rock rattlesnakes, uh, Crotalus calabri, um, they come in purple, they come in green, or if you're in El Paso, they come in silver. And I want to find... I've been <laughs> struck out, but I'm going to find one. So that's on well, the list. You already know I have a room for you, brother. Whenever you're ready, you just we'll wait go find them together. Yeah. All right. All right, now put yourself through the ringer. Put myself through. I'm putting myself through the ringer. I only came up with three questions on the spot. I got to come up with two more. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Favorite movie? Ooh, um, Memento. I'm a big plot twist guy, and uh, and I think like the it plays a segment and it goes backwards, so it's not your typical run of the mill, and it has a good plot twist. Um, yeah, so memento. Okay, and here, here's the creme de la creme. Hopefully, if you could spend oh, I'm vegan, no cream for six me. months <laughs> in any location in the world to study whatever Ooh. animal you wanted, where would it be? What animal uh, would it be? What animal? And why? Let's see. So basically, if you could pull a Dave Kaufman right now, <laughs> what would you yeah. do? Huh. That's a thinker. Ooh, no, no, it's not. I want to go to Africa, and I want to study the boom slang. I love boom slangs. So that, that wasn't on my list of what I want to work with. But I've always had this fascination with them. They have these big old eyes. They have a cytotoxin. So if they bite you, you bleed out of your eyes. And, um, but yeah, and they're just wiry. <laughs> so it's like, that's something I'm like, that's, that's a challenge for me. You know, they're, they're wiry, you know, they're, they're pretty unpredictable. Um, and cause I mean, while I'm out there, I get to watch them eat chameleons, which I like chameleons, but I also like the boom slang, but yeah. So I get to work with them too. That's a bonus. So, yeah, boom time for sure in Africa. That's awesome. So. 
Well, brother, I appreciate your time. Uh, if you have any questions for me, you're welcome to throw them out right now. Anyone has any questions for Max or me that you would like to put out before we get off of here, just shoot them out now. Um, I'd see a lot of great ideas coming out. Everyone, all the questions I threw out at you, everyone's answering as well, which is freaking amazing. But yeah, I, I, I'm trying to focus on this, but I, I'm going <laughs> to this. So, um, and for anyone in this feed, I'm like, I'm an open guy. I, I always tell people I never sleep. Don't be afraid to DM me. Um, if you have questions, comments, you want to talk about things, you know, I'm an open book, you know, I'm, you know, I, I used to want to be mysterious, but it's no, I'm, I'm an open book. <laughs> Uh, Gay, my carpet is doing amazing. She is growing a lot faster than I was ready for. So um, it looks like she will be getting a new enclosure before too long. I'm going to have to build my first reptile enclosure myself because I just don't want to keep her in a tub anymore. Or Jurassic Plastics. I, hold on. This is like not even related they, I went to Austin, and in my blog, they had these stackable 4 by 6s um, and they have some smaller sizes, too. Always go up. Don't go out, because then you can keep more reptiles. So they're, they're good. I really like them. Um, Do you know uh, Serpent Syndicate? You were right across from him at the Arlington show. I don't know if you ever got to talk to him, though. Arlington. Um, let's see. Uh, there's the plastic there. enclosures oh yes 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 yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that's, big... that's my guy for my enclosures once i get them man like everything's plastic welded plastic he was standing on them yeah like the dudes gets on them jumps up and down dances on them no issue like once i get the opportunity that's where i'm going i just i'm probably gonna have to build i mean my my carpet's probably two and a half feet but i have her i'm being an asshole and i have her in a ball python tub right now just because that's the sizes that i have so i need to get her moved right two seconds let me but, show you uh david the name of that person was brad from serpent syndicate or you can go to jurassic plastics animal plastics there's a lot of great uh enclosure people so this one's my jungle he's my big old male and he's oh, he's pretty good size yeah uh he won't get any bigger but he's breeding right now uh he proved out last year uh with a jungle jag so nice. but yeah i love carpets um i like i talked with catfish coolie about them and they said um like, you know, it's the perfect size big snake. They get just the right amount of size. They move around a little bit. Um, they're easy to work with. So I like carpets a lot. I'm going to put him up, though. I just wanted to show him off. Let's see. Um, what was that name again? Looking at questions. Uh, David, I just put it in there, but if you want Brad's contact info from Serpent Syndicate, just get with me after this. You can reach me uh, either through here on Instagram at Feely's Clutch Reptiles, on Facebook at John Feely, whatever makes it easiest for you. Uh, I can get you all his information. He's a great dude. I actually need to, I'm supposed to go up to Minnesota and shoot a commercial for him because he just opened his warehouse, but funds and work and school and all that good stuff is kind of putting a damper on it right now so as soon as i get time i'll be heading up to minnesota soon so. minnesota is beautiful i the public transit system around there is super easy to work around on so if you get the option to fly just fly and take the bus everywhere it's super easy and yeah i would like when been... up there i just I, I put out a vlog a little while ago that went up there um tried to run into dave kaufman but i think he was busy he he 
landed and then flew out to Florida. You know, <laughs> flew the coffin. you heard you were coming and ran away. Shoot. I'm still waiting on my Herper's uh, DVDs. I left them with him in uh, Chicago. I bought them and I went to the office. <laughs> Forgot him at his table, and uh, but but I'm in no hurry because you know he's been in and out of the hospital, so I'm like, oh, yeah. it's a it's a crazy life. Yeah. But all right, guys, I want to thank you so much. We've been on here for 50 minutes, which means I've been on here for almost an hour. The last two times, I usually keep these at 20 minutes, so it was a good time. We lost okay. track of time. So it's all good, man. I, I love it. I, I honestly, this is, this is probably my favorite part of YouTube. Every week is coming on Sunday nights, having someone new on my channel and presenting the great things about them. And sometimes the not so great things about them. Cause I like to play devil's advocate with a lot of stuff, but there's just, there's not a negative thing I could say about you, man. You're, you did not make You're one joke. I was an open book, and I know I I'm a, I try to be a nice guy sometimes. Maybe it's because the wife poked and prodded me. You guys did know my wife and Max go back a long way, so yeah. The fact that he, he came up to me and was like, "Hey, oh. you want to do something?" was absolutely crazy. Because when she saw it, she was like, "Yeah, I know him." <laughs> so. Well, dude, I appreciate you having me on, and I'm hoping Absolutely, everyone brother. Merry Christmas. Grab somebody you love. Hug them. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have a Merry Christmas. Enjoy your New Year. Uh, next weekend is Pomona, so I will not be doing a live. The week after that, I will have a very, very special guest that can sometimes bring a lot of controversy. So stay tuned for that. Be ready for it. It's going to be amazing. And you guys have a great weekend. Enjoy the holidays. We're going to see you soon. You guys stay blessed.